Welcome to Buckets. My name's Matt Moore. I'm the senior NBA writer for the Action Network, joined by professional better Raheem Palmer and NBA futures analyst Brandon Anderson. This is your Wednesday workshop. We're going to break down the games in the NBA slate. We'll also talk a little bit about some other of the goings on because, well, some teams need some slander. So we're going to go ahead and dive into that. I uh, want to let you know that everything we talk about on this podcast can be found in the award-winning Action Network app. It's the best place for you to track your bets. Get up to the second information on where the money and tickets are coming in, as well as get picks from Raheem and Brandon throughout the NBA playoffs. Let's go ahead and start here. Brandon, Boston Celtics go and sweep the Brooklyn Nets. My Nets tickets uh, did not cash in this series. Uh, the, despite the fact, by the way, the Nets had a better effective field goal percentage in the series. How wild is that? The Nets had a better, they shot better from the field and they got swept. That's never happened, according to Kevin Pelton. Never occurred. Uh, so that's the, that makes me feel better about it. Uh, I guess my, my big question here is, I, we do this a lot where like a team rolls and we're like, are we just overthinking this? Are they just going to beat everybody? I mean, look, I guess Boston's been telling us they're the best team in the league for three months. That's what they've been telling us, that they're the best team in the league for three months. Uh, do you feel like there is any other bet to make on the NBA title except the Boston Celtics at this point? On the title, I think that the way the Warriors are playing, it, it, it's a conversation between the Warriors and the Celtics. On the East, I don't know that there's another bet to be made, especially not just how well the Celtics are playing, but you look at what's the competition, either it's Chris Middleton injury bucks or it's Kyle Lowry injury heat or it's Joel Embiid injury Sixers or maybe Fred Van Vliet injury Raptors <laughs> like the the path has opened up. So I think I think you certainly can make a case for the Warriors the way they're playing. We just said a few days ago that they were clear favorites. So I think those are the two teams you're looking at. But yeah, I did. Yeah, the, we'll, we'll, we'll slander the Nets. We'll, we'll get to that too. But I, I do think what's interesting is it's easy to slander the Nets right now, but the Celtics are reminding me a little bit of the Warriors from 2015, not as the same team, just as like the, in hindsight, it was like, yeah, Steph Curry and Draymond and the rise, it just happened and they just took over by storm. But nobody really, really thought that was going to happen. I was like, well, we'll see. We'll see in the playoffs. We'll see how it goes. And in hindsight, I was like, oh yeah, the Warriors, they just crushed everyone, but that's not even really how the playoff run went for them either. So I just, I wonder in hindsight, a month from now, will we still slander the nets like we have and are about to, or will we be like, you know, that was the toughest series Boston faced to get it out of the East. That was actually a pretty good fight by Brooklyn. They held up even better than Milwaukee did or than Philly or Miami. I think that's in play. I'm not sure it will happen. I just, I don't know if we know, if we learn more about Boston or Brooklyn in the series. I don't think we have a way to know that yet. So I guess like the one follow-up question here is um, with Brooklyn, right? I mean, we saw on this podcast all year that we're not betting them. Like we didn't, there was never a point where we were like, yeah, I think, I think you gotta bet the, the Nets now. We never bet that. We mm -hmm. never bet that. Um, I bet Heat, mm -hmm. I bet Celtics, I bet Bucks. I have positions on those three teams. Mm -hmm. Um, I have some like very, very long shot finals matchup stuff on like Sixers, Mavericks, and things like that. Um, but we didn't necessarily rule them out. Yeah. I guess my, my question for you, Brandon, is like, should we have just ruled them out entirely? Man, that's, that's the question of the hour because it, it feels like we should have, but also the Nets literally were the preseason favorites. If you go look at sportsoddshistory.com, which has preseason odds for every team from 1985 to present, the Brooklyn Nets are the first team ever to be the preseason favorite and not win a single playoff game. By the way, the Lakers were the second preseason favorite. They didn't win a playoff game either in case we forgot. Yeah. So this, look, a year ago, before the Russell Westbrook trade, not to go Lakers, 
but I was on the death march toward Lakers nets. Like, here we go. It's just going to happen. We remember that I, I was just ready for it to come. And now neither of them won a playoff game. So yeah, I, I, I was jarred to listen over the last couple of months. It, we've talked about nets. We talked about Lakers. We talked about them because we have to, because they've been the betting favorite all year long. We've never said to bet. Well, I said a bet on the Lakers. I can't quite go there, I guess. But we've never said a bet on the Nets. We've never gotten there. But we never quite went far enough the other way, I think. You know, even this series, look, the Celtics have been demolishing teams for months. And we got to the series. Raheem, the second that they posted the line, the second it posted on Twitter, you were like, what are they doing here? This is a coin flip. What's happening? And then what did we do? We were like, but Kevin Durant and Kyrie, it's pretty close. One of us picked the Nets. The other two of us didn't pick the Celtics enough. Like everything we saw about this team and about the Celtics, if we really believed what we said we believed, we should have been Brinks trucking the Celtics. This and is we, some, didn't, we didn't yeah. dismiss them enough. This is some results over process stuff. Yeah, I, you know what though? I mean, look, when you look at the point differential for this series, they won a four game sweep by a combined 18 points. So one of two, th- two things go differently. This is a two, two series. And I think we kind of have to process it in that way. And that the nets, even with all their flaws, even with Kevin Durant, not being himself playing the worst he's played since his series against the Tony Allen Grizzlies, the nets were still right there. This against- wasn't a demolition. It just yeah, was, it wasn't like like if they if they won every game by twenty, Brandon, I'd be with you because it'd be like oh well, like yeah. the, the Celtics are just way way better. But I'm I, more I do, of the I mindset do wonder of just, though like, with the sequencing always matters a lot to us as, as sports fans. I think we underrate sequencing. I wonder how we would have processed this series if Game One wasn't Game One. Like that one went right down to the wire, and we had the buzzer beater. What if that was the second or third game? What were the Celtics? Not that they ran away with any of the games, but that was the one game it really felt like the Nets should have had. Yeah, but uh, if you remember after game one, I also said, I think I think I probably lost this bet because yeah. of that game. Like that was the yeah. coin flip, right? Like they needed yeah. to get that one. They win game one and the series literally does, I think, kind of shift. The Nets get a lot more confidence. The Celtics get a little bit, because this is part of it. The Celtics are playing right now. They're just like, we can't lose. You know what this lose. series reminds me. This series reminds me of. I don't know if you remember the second round series between the, in 2011 between the Lakers and the Mavericks. Yeah, that's a good comparison. That's yeah. a really like the Lakers. Comparison. I mean, they, they had home court advantage. They were right there in Game One. It, it, they just couldn't pull it off. Same thing with Game Two and Game Game Three. And then at some point, the Mavericks flipped the switch, and it was just like, all right, the Lakers are just are not going to win this series. And that was yeah. obviously Phil Jackson's last game in LA, but that's what this series reminds me of. It was a close series. And then Matt, you said this on Twitter, the Celtics are getting better as this series is going on. And a lot of that is coaching. Whereas like the Nets were getting worse. And I I think that, you know, the Nets were able to put up a a good effort in game four, but ultimately they just couldn't do enough. Yeah. I did a thread on, on kind of what I got wrong. And the biggest Mm -hmm. one was uh, I over, we talked about this the other day, but like, I just really underestimated the coaching matchup and I don't necessarily know that I underestimated it. I don't think it was a known, I don't think anyone could look at this and go like, I know that Ime Odoka is a better playoff coach than Steve Nash. I don't think anybody had any reason you could, you could say that based off of whatever, but I think you're, you're again, it's, it's process over results mm-hmm. or results over process. And then even, like, even when you look at like, look, Steve Nash pushed as many buttons as he could. Like he tried the small ball lineup. He tried drumming. He tried everything you could. But I think at some point it becomes the Harden trade basically just ruined this team. They traded all of their death for Harden. Harden yeah. didn't work out. And now what do you have? You have a team who could have used Jared Allen. And instead you have Andre Drummond and you have Nick Claxton and you have a bunch of guys who just don't fit. Well, and let, let's be fair too. I tweeted the stats out just like an hour ago. The player has got to win the game. And Kevin Durant had a great game four, but a miserable series. He finishes the playoffs 39% from the field. That includes 40% on 15 and a half two-pointers a game. But you got to help him out, man. Like, 
the, the you system's do, got but... better shots for him. You got to be able to help. Like, this is part of it is you can't just be like, we're just going to run. We're going to run into this thresher over and over and over again. Like, it's just at some level taking inefficient shots versus great defense. You're eventually getting like, th- this is the kind of the problem I think with how we look at this is there's kind of this, this kind this concept of like KD just underperformed. And I look at it more as the nets did not have any sort of structure to be like KD. We can't have you going ISO versus like, they're too good defensively. Like we're our our expected outcome on these is bad. Like even if you play great, we're not getting enough of a margin. We have to we have to play smarter than this. But like, I'll also say this: I Kyrie Irving's level of quit last night was yeah. chef's kiss. He got himself his stats, but that man that man quit again. Let's yeah. move on. I we got to we got to get through the rest of these mm-hmm. series. Uh, the only other one I want to talk about, though, is um, so Ra, you and I both bet Sixers on the series. Mm-hmm. We both had 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 we bet this price. Mm-hmm. We liked it. We felt great. As soon as it was two zero, I started to get nervous about the Sixers. I was like, "This is going too good. This is going too well. I don't want this to be so easy because this is where D- Glenn and Harden <laughs> and B. This is where I get nervous. Mm-hmm. And they win Game Three, and I'm like, Phew, "Okay." That was a dangerous spot, but we got past it. We're good. Mm. It's three two. I saw you put this this in the in the app this morning. You got uh, you found a, a plus five ninety on Raptors to win the series. Uh, I'm hedging too. Mm. I'm hedging my price too. Um, yeah. It, can the Sixers pull out of this? I'm gonna be honest with you. Last night, what I saw was very concerning, and the biggest concerning thing is that they were attacking Joel Embiid like defensively precious Achua is going straight at Joel Embiid like with I don't care about I don't care that this guy is possibly an MVP candidate and it's like that's problematic but one of the things that I think we we saw is that look there was a playoff series before where we saw David Lee get hurt and Draymond Green stepped in and it's like the Warriors almost lucked into a winning strategy and that reminds me of this series where we saw Fred Van Vliet he got hurt And Fred Van Vliet has been absolutely abysmal. I mean, with him on the floor, they're a minus 32. They're giving up 128 points per 100 possessions with him on the floor. And it's like with him off the floor, now you have all these big wings. And look, Fred Van Vliet, he hasn't been shooting well. You look back, for whatever reason, against Philadelphia, he just hasn't been good. If you look back at that 2019 series, he was abysmal. He's even worse this year. So it's like now the Raptors, got all these big wings on the floor. If you ask me with the way Harton's playing, I think Harton's only shooting 37% from the field in this series. And with Joel Embiid's thumb injury, Pascal Siakam might be the best player in this series right now. Last couple of games, he's been absolutely dominant. So you give me the better coach at Nick Nurse, who has just found ways of generating offense. You have our turnover prone team in the Sixers, because we know Joel Embiid can't pass out of a double team. We know James Harden struggles with turnovers, especially gets all the length, and the Raptors are able to score in transition, which is what they've done all year long. I think the Raptors are live to win this series. Yeah, it's not great, Um, especially considering, well, I mean, look, if if you're in a tough spot like Harden is, all you can do, you know, what you really need is the the trust and support of your teammates, like Joel Embiid, who threw him under the bus last night in a post-game press conference, because that's all Joel Embiid does. Um, Brandon, Mm -hmm. you like to go a little uh, contrarian. There's no real betting angle here, because there's no price above that fits your long odds (laughs) requirements. Um, Mm -hmm. Do you have any takes on the series? Well, I mean, I cashed my series Raptors plus two and a half already with the win last night. So that was a plus 750, though. When I bet that the Raptors were 40 to one to win the series. So like any good better, I uh, enjoyed my win for about half a second. And I was like, ah, I should have bet more and gone for the bigger win. So, yeah, I, I the Raptors are alive, but I also don't think the Sixers are dead here. I texted this to Raheem last night, the shot quality on the game yesterday, like that felt like just a a steam roll. It felt like Philly just rolled over shot quality, made it a coin flip, like straight up a coin flip that, that the Sixers missed a ton of threes. They did both the last couple of games and that the shot variance is going to, and the Raptors didn't shoot well on threes either, but the Raptors aren't a great three point shooting team. Tobias and Tyrese and these guys on the Sixers have been hitting and super rating them the first couple of games. So 
Yeah, I mean, look, there's two days off before game six. That's really important right now because the Sixers starters are running into the ground. So they're going to get a little, a little extra rest. They're going to hit shots at some point. Are they? So, I mean, yeah, we, we have to, we have Wait, to assume. Some no, we, 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 don't, we, we don't have to assume that. You know why? Because they, they were never really a great three point shooting team anyway. Like look at the personnel. We're looking at guys like Tobias Harris. We're looking at Tyrese Maxey, who I love. They've been shooting well since Harden came onto the team. But yeah. are they natural three-point shooters? Those guys are. Tyrese Maxey was one of the best shooters in his class coming out, and Tobias has always been a pretty good shooter. So that's but what Tob- I'm saying. Is- Tobias, Tobias is more of a – he's more of a – I'm going to put the ball down on the floor. He's not really a natural catch-and-shoot guy. Yeah, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I, can, I, I think- I've seen – that. to me, we've mm-hmm. seen the Raptors – you're right, Raheem. What we mm-hmm. saw with them attacking the defense mm-hmm. and attacking Joel Embiid, there was a clip I shared on Twitter that someone had that was seven straight possessions that whoever Embiid was on, they basically just cleared out and said, go for it. And ended up with, I think, four layups and another bucket and a few free throws. Like they scored all seven possessions. That's worrisome. I don't have a fix for that. However, I don't feel like the Raptors' defense – magically found an elixir as much as the Sixers hit a way more shots than they were ever going to keep doing the first couple of games. And then it suddenly went the whole other way. The last couple, the Sixers offense is what went really sour the last couple of games. And I know that that's the window, the Joel Embiid window since the injury, but this has been more than that. And the effort was, was different. It's like the energy thing, I know, Raheem, you're big on energy. Like, the energy and the vibes, that was woof last night. That was really, really a rough look. So maybe that's just it, and we're just done here. But the encore thing, this still looks at least like a coin flip here, and we still have two games to blow and a game seven at home. So I think Philly might escape but end up the loser in the series somehow anyway. Are you betting Sixers? I'm not betting the Sixers, certainly go. not putting my money on it. They're still the favorites. Like I, there's no value on it. <laughs> I will, we'll come back to game six for tomorrow when we get there, but I, I haven't thought enough about it, but I will consider the Sixers for game six. I mean, I will say like, it, it's funny. Cause you're like, there's no value there. Sixers are a point and a half favorite in game. Well, I'm saying for the series, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> mm. like- <laughs> like, like I'm not betting on it. There's a minus number in front of it. It's like, he's absolutely just disgusted by any bet that has a minus in front of it, Rock. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get into the Wednesday games. So two games on the slate, not a great slate, not, not a dynamite bet night in the old NBA playoffs after what we've And gotten. it just got worse. And it just yeah. got worse. We got word before this podcast went on. Let's start with Chicago and, and Milwaukee. Uh, this opened at minus 10 bucks, minus 10. There were some nines in the market yesterday. Zach Levine has been ruled out. He's in health and safety protocols again. This is like the third time for Levine uh, this season. So he's out. Uh, it's now moved to 12. That's the latest number that I've got on the screen is uh, bucks minus 12. I grabbed it at 10. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I grabbed it at nine yesterday. I do have a nine ticket. Um, just because I went back to the well, which what could possibly go wrong there. Um, so Levine is not going to play in this game. Middleton's obviously out total 219 and a half down to 218 with the Levine news. Rod, you have a play on this game. Yeah. I mean, don't overthink this. Look, when you look at the, the, the Chicago Bulls in this series, they struggled to score. Like this is a team with a 95 offensive rating throughout this series. And they had Zach Levine in the lineup. You take Zach Levine out the lineup, it's going to get even worse. In two games of this series, they had offensive ratings of 86. So I actually put this into the app the other day for game four. I took the Bulls first half team total under 52. Look, we all know that the Bucs are going to come out defensively and kind of lock this team down. And I think the team total for game five in the first half is 49 and a half. I like that. Also gave out the under on Sunday because all of these games are going under because the Bulls can't score consistently. I gave out the under 219 in Sunday's game. I actually put that into the app today. It's down to 218. I still would take it. Um, I like I like the, the full game under. Let's go Bulls first half team total under 49. I don't want to go full game team total. Actually, we can go full team full game team total 
on the Bulls. I'm just worried about the, it being some blowout potential and maybe the Bulls kind of, you know, taking us over that number. But I just don't see the Bulls scoring. I don't want to lay the 11 with the, the with the, I think it's 12 at this point with the, the Bucks, yeah. just because I think it's getting up there at some point when you get a three, four point line move, you're not really getting too much value, but I don't expect the Bulls to score. Uh, Brandon, do you have a play on the game or a prop for this one? Mm-hmm. So I was all ready to swoop in here with a, with a shocking minus 200 bet for you guys. I was going to go with the, what I call the, the take the night off parlay where you just <laughs> take the Bucks, take the Warriors on the money line, put them together, take the night off, don't watch the game, come back and cash your check. Unfortunately, that was minus 200. Now it's closer to minus 250. And even that, the line is long. And I'm like, ah, I don't know, minus 250. I don't know if I feel like paying that. So I guess we can't necessarily take the night off. Props, we're going with Grayson Allen over. Maybe you've heard of him. He's been pretty good. He's a 9.7 BPM so far for the playoffs. Seems seems decent. The last two games with Chris Middleton out, he's he's led the team in scoring both games. He's 11 of 14 on 379% from three-point. Obviously, that's not going to keep up forever, but he's getting really good looks. He's the last two games, his three point prop was 1.5. So you hit two and we go over, and he's hit 11 the last couple of games. <clears throat> so we'll see what we adjust on there. The, those lines are not up yet. His lines went going up right before the game. So keep an eye for that. Bobby Portis overs the last two games. <clears throat> uh, he's starting in the place of Middleton. Uh, He's averaging 16 and 13 the last two games, both double doubles. He's hit five three pointers. So you play the double double or play the the rebounding over that sort of thing. Uh, I'm with Raheem on just the, how how do we fade the bulls? Basically is the question. We didn't even mention too, Alex Caruso is questionable uh, with the concussion symptoms that he picked up. And if at this point, if you're Chicago, like why, why, why would you play Caruso? Why would you, if there's a risk at all, why would you play him when Zach is out and Lonzo is out and the series looks like it does? Like, I gotta be honest. When I came to this game, and we all know what I think about my Bulls. We all know how I feel about this team. But this was such an easy, obvious buck spot. And the money line is really long on Chicago. I was all set to talk myself into the long money line odds. And then I saw the injuries and I looked at how bad the numbers were. And then Zach was out too. And it's like, no. <laughs> so I think, I think I like Raheem, what you said, the Bulls team total under first half. I think I'd rather play the first half than the game, just because who knows, like this, this is going to get away. And then who knows what happens late, but. Why are we still here? This is my, like, why did the Bucks lose that game too? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, we, yeah, we should we sweep. should be I'm swimming just... in sweet money right now yeah, from I'm some so of these. Annoyed that yeah, that. like they just but... they boxed it so hard in those first two games. Mm. By the way, the the Bulls EFG for the series is forty five percent. Yeah, the series. And if you, throw out, <laughs> if you throw out game two, the one game when Demar had a big game and Vooch hit four threes, outside of game two, their EFG is forty one percent. So, question here: Last year, the Bucks won the title. Their defense was invincible. Like their defense was ungodly for two months it didn't do that at all this season but brooke lopez was out the entire season is the bucks invincible defense back and are we smashing every under next series yeah i think we're straight we're smashing it next series i think yeah i i think brooklyn's gonna be or i think boston's gonna be very much like oh oh this is what it's like to play a team that actually defends oh like this team actually protects the rim and doesn't just let us do whatever we want. I think there's gonna be some shock on both teams, honestly. And that's what's concerning. I think for Milwaukee is like their offense has also been terrible versus a bulls defense has been pretty bad the last two months. Like that to me is like another storyline here. Um, we'll talk about that when we do the series preview for that series after the bucks clinch, if they clinch uh, no, no coming back and being like, I talked about wanting the bulls. No, none of that, Brandon. No, no, no. I, I, I'm, I, I, I give it, look, I wore my Bulls hoodie for one last time for the season. This is a goodbye to the Bulls hoodie. Uh, Alex Caruso is not going to travel today, <laughs> but Donovan didn't want to rule him out for game five since it's like a two hour. Well, it is, you know, it's just a quick car ride up there, but that's, uh, it's not great. That's not that. Did you have a play great. on this one, Matt? Um, I will probably look at once the lines post, I'll probably look at DeRozan, uh, turnover overs will be my angle because he's going to have to handle the ball a lot more. They're not going to want the ball in Kobe White's hands or 
do Zoom news. So um, yeah. he's going to have to do everything, and the Bucks will know that, and they'll probably yeah. swarm him. So I think just from a usage perspective, probably yeah. taking the over on everything with DeRozan is probably a good call just because it's going to be mass volume to try and keep them alive. Um, other than that, I don't have a play. I just – I, yeah. I have I have bucks minus ten or minus nine rather I have minus nine I found that in the yeah. market yesterday, based off of but look I'm zero for two in the series betting <laughs> the bucks so Kobe White by the way has been terrible I had that in my notes too so I, already with Caruso questionable meaning more Kobe that was going to be that was like well I guess I'm not taking the Bulls money line and now with Zach out too they have no choice but to have to play Kobe I will though look for some Iodasunmu lines and see if I can play. I'm guessing his props will be a late add also, but I, I'd take a few IO uh, overs if they come out. Just so we're clear on this, uh, he was, Levine was not feeling great this morning per Donovan, but we'll have to go through more testing, which will give the Bulls more clarity. So he's in health and safety protocols, but he's also symptomatic. So yeah, he's not ruling him out though. So he's only, only questionable. Well, Tom um, grilled him out. So last game, Denver takes on Golden State game five. Get, Denver got a very feel good win in game four to not get swept, which is, it was honestly pretty important for the team just to not feel terrible about it. Uh, this opened at eight and a half. It's up to nine. Um, 57% of the tickets are on Golden State. 92% of the spread money is on Golden State. 63% of the money line tickets are on Golden State. 90% of the money is on Golden State. Totals 225 and a half. It hasn't moved. 60% of the uh, tickets are on the over, but 51% of the money is on the under. Um, I will go ahead and tell you, uh, I bet Nuggets plus nine. I'm not going heavy on it, um, but the numbers, we went over this yesterday. The drop in win percentage versus uh, spread percentage, just to go over this one more time for teams that are up 3-1 at home. They win 82% of the time since 2003. They cover 48% of the time. That doesn't mean that it's a blind play for me based off of that historical trend, but it does give me an indication that there has been what is a pretty predictable effect of you're up 3-1 in the series. All right, they got one game. They're going to absolutely destroy this team at home. They've been the better team over the course of the series. They're going to just wipe them out and roll over them. And let me be clear, definite possibility that that occurs absolutely within play i will probably look at one of brandon's alternate overs that i know he's going to play uh, alternate spreads for the warriors in this game as kind of a hedge opportunity but um ultimately here's what i think golden state shocks you you try playing against normal teams that just play pick and roll 100 times and then you face the warriors who beat you with off ball movement smart rotations back cuts um combinated complicated lineups and combinations all these types of things the Warriors have a couple of, of tricks they can pull up their sleeves here, which is they can start Steph Curry, right? Okay, enough screwing around. We're going to start <laughs> Steph Curry. One of the issues with that is that where, the, where they've really hurt the Nuggets is they've hurt them with specific lineup combos against when they have to go to their benches later in these quarters. So they play Looney with the, with the non-Curry starters in the beginning, and the Nuggets have won those minutes. Curry's got a massive plus minus in this series, but part of that's because he starts the second quarter, which he still will uh, most likely, uh, even if he starts. But my issue here is that that second quarter run where they put in the death lineup, the death pool lineup, the PTSD lineup, whatever you want to call it, that's where it's been like really complicated and difficult. So, uh, but that's where the Nuggets also go to their bench. If Curry starts... Might be a little bit of an adjustment there. The Nuggets have just honestly played them pretty well in these last two games. They were within range of winning game three. They were right there. This is in Golden State. It's a much tougher environment. I totally get that. The Warriors are the better team. Totally get that. I absolutely have a parlay on the Warriors money line. They're going to win this game. I feel confident they're going to win this game. But nine points is a lot. I think that because this line has actually moved up, it gives me a little bit of confidence. I'm willing to go against the market here. And I'll grab Nuggets plus nine. The Nuggets are a pretty good team. They played terribly the first two games. They've adjusted and figured out more of what they need to do. They're going to close with Austin Rivers, which I think will give them a better shot. Bones Highland's been fantastic. There's absolutely a chance that this is Warriors minus 30. There's absolutely a chance that that's on the table. But if I'm going to play something and I decide I want to, I'm going to go with Nuggets plus nine. Rob, what do you think? Look, I'm, I think you're right about the Nuggets. Um, the thing I'm actually struggling with is the total. It doesn't make any sense to me. Look, all four of these games have gone over. We had 
The total at 223, 222 and a half, 223, 223, 223 and a half. Now we're up to 225. There's some 226s in the market. My model actually makes this number 235 for the playoff numbers, 230 for the post playoff, um, post All Star break numbers. And yet this number is only at 225, 226 with all of these games hitting 230 and above. So it's just like, I don't understand. Like, you know how there's certain games where it just feels like it's too easy? That's what this feels like. So, I mean, you got sharp money on the under, which is kind of saying that this game is going to be a blowout. But it's just, it feels like the Nuggets have actually found their footing offensively as this series is going on. So they've scored in every game. Like yeah. their offensive, they haven't had a poor offensive outing. They just can't get stops. Yeah. And Jokic has gotten better as the yeah. series is going on. So to me, that kind of denotes that you're going to see the Nuggets in the over. If Scott Foster plays in this game, refs this game. No oh, play, plays yeah. is accurate. Yeah. If Scott Foster refs in this game, that could be interesting because that's the one thing that that that's the one thing that can really hurt Golden State is is foul trouble. Uh, Brandon, give me all the alternate Warriors plays. <laughs> Literally, you said Warriors minus thirty. I have it in my notes. It's plus fourteen hundred for that one. If you want it, it's the longest line you can get on Fanduel. So yeah, I look the the Warriors the Warriors alternate covers didn't work out for us last time. Nor did the sweep. They lost. But man everything had to go Denver's way everything to eke out the win at home in the last minute because Steph had a foot on the line because Will Barton hit a three and then they finally got the win but yeah the obviously the the long alternate covers were never in play there like from from the second quarter when Bones hit like three threes in in a two-minute period and that was just they were all dead at that point basically so what I'm trying to figure out the first two games, the Warriors won by 16 and 20. The last two games were both five point games. So home court can't be that huge of a swing, but we know it is a big thing. We know that Golden State is awesome at home. We know the Denver is very good at home and the altitude and all those things. We know the role players are a big part. And boy, are there a lot of role players on Denver in particular. So I'm I'm trying to figure out like how much is we said this earlier, like uh, I remember early, maybe 10 games in the season when the Warriors were steamrolling everyone. And I asked you guys, like, is, is this Warriors offense going to get figured out over a playoff series? And you both jumped on it. Like, yeah, like the, the cuts and all some of the stuff they do is going to get figured out a little bit. So I, I do, I'm with you, Matt. And that my gut says, just take all the Warriors blowout lines again. And I'm going to take them a little bit, but not as hard as I did last time, because I think that that's in play because it's always in play the way the Warriors are playing right now. But the Nuggets show up. They've shown us how many years in a row now in the playoffs. They are not the team to just walk away. They always show up and fight to the end. They love the adversity of spots. They know what we're saying, which is that, Get out of here, Denver. The, the series is already over. What, why are you even going out to Golden State? They know. They know that's what everyone is expecting here. So I can't get to Denver. Like, I can't take Denver because my eyes just have seen the Warriors do Warriors things. But I'm not going to go too hard on the Warriors because the, the, the Nuggets have earned that from me. Warriors by 15 is two to one Warriors by 30 is 14 to one. I'll probably nibble a little bit in case we get the blowout. My favorite play is this Warriors third quarter. That's the, that's yeah. old faithful Warriors third quarter. Screw around early, try to hit too many threes, get some turnovers. The nuggets show up and fight hard. When I did the, the case for the Warriors uh, article a couple weeks ago, I was blown away by the numbers at home, the numbers in the third quarter and the home third quarter numbers. And again, the series game one and two, they won the third quarter by nine points and by 14 points. So whatever the lineup stuff is in the first half, Matt, you're right. We don't really know, but if it's at all close, Kerr is going to just put those guys out there, the pool party lineup and just be like, all right, let's, let's end this thing. So I'll take the third quarter right now. You know what? It just hit me. That might be the play. If you want to play on the Nuggets, maybe play the team total over. Because we know the Warriors are going to score. Look, the team total over is 108 and a half. 
last two games, they put up 113 and 126. First two games, they put up 107 and 106. And that's what Jokic, like, like I think in game one, he had 25 points on 25 shots. And game two, he really struggled to score as well. So I think you have to expect a, a higher offensive output from Jokic than we got in those first two games, especially if he can get Golden State in foul trouble. So I think that team total over on the Nuggets might be like a solid play. Yeah, I think that that makes sense because mm. if the Warriors just score a million points, then the Nuggets are going to lose anyway. But the Nuggets might also score. You might still win your bet, even though the like we don't think the Nuggets are going to magically stop the Warriors' offense. We can't really yeah. do much about that at this point. But they can score and beat them if the Warriors miss shots and get turnovers again, or they can just score and lose anyway. Like, still this could easily bet. this could easily be one thirty, one ten. The pace has been higher than you think too. This is actually the third fastest. Mm-hmm series in the playoffs which is strange because denver likes to absolutely slow it down but they can't really versus golden state they can't control the pace um the last two games right draymond's got a plus 13.5 net rating like he's won those minutes but yoga just starting to figure him out a little bit um draymond it's been really fascinating to hear his podcast and hear him talk about like all of the things that he talks about where he says, you know, he's like, Jokic got me. Like, he's a really great player. He's like, I got off my feet too much. I was on, on too, too high on my toes. Like he talked about all these kind of things. Um, it'll be interesting to see, like, look, if Jokic is hitting threes, that changes the, kind of the equation for Denver. Um, because is he gonna though, because he hasn't shot like the entire season. Uh, he hit three in that last game. I realize, but, but on the bulk of the season, it's he not hit, really been there. He hit two and then one before that. Um, he stopped shooting them. I think yeah. he had a wrist injury. I wonder if that's feeling better. Yeah. And I wonder if like, that's part of the, equi- like, I get it. I get it. I'm just saying like, that's how yeah. he, how he kind of wants that matchup here. Here's, here's what's interesting. The last two games, right. Um, one and one Warriors still got that win. Curry's got a negative net rating. pool has got a negative net rating. That's interesting. I mean, pool has had so many turnovers. Mm-hmm. Been, like it's just, yeah. So it's like pool is like, I mean, you could still see that he hasn't the, um, the, the warriors, I think prop play, if you're looking for one, mm-hmm. I actually think is clay Thompson. Yeah. That's how I got yeah. that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause uh, Aaron, Aaron Gordon on pool last game worked pretty well. Like actually Aaron Gordon defended pool really well. And which means that they have I to was playing, Monte Morris on clay. Yeah. <laughs> which was somebody, this is the thing. Steph clay and pool for this series are averaging 76 points a game over 24 for each of them. The trio is 12 threes a game and 70% true shooting. What are you going to do about that? I don't know, but yeah, you're right. I- if pool is getting a little shut down by Gordon and you know, they're going to put attention on Steph. Clay Thompson, the Clay Thompson becomes the guy that is kind of left over. So five, three, six, and seven threes, the series 5.2 per game. His line is usually three and a half. So that's the one I marked to over the threes and probably the, the alternate five as well. Hey, I got a question for you before we move on. Um, so there's been 34 postseason games this season, right? In those 34 games, the underdog, has only t- covered two games in which they didn't win. So basically, if you pick the winner, hmm. I mean, if you pick the winner, you're picking the team who went, who who covers the spread. I can't that get said, there. I can't do get you there. think the Nuggets have a shot and would you sprinkle based on what we've seen throughout these playoffs? Because, I mean, all these teams are shooting a lot of threes. We're seeing a lot more variance. Look, I'm taking nine because of the number. Mm-hmm. I can't get there. Like nine's a big number to me, but I also look at these historical trends with, with game fives, right? I think it's easier for the underdog to get the wins earlier in these series, right? Mm-hmm. Favorites have dominated, and that's definitely true. Um, I'm not going heavy on this. I'm not like, this is a yeah. spot to bet the Nuggets. I'm like, eh, I not, mean, you, nine's you, a lot here. You, you, nine's you a covered, lot for how they played. You, you've covered the numbers for a long time, and you one thing you've always said is that the Nuggets play well when their back is against the wall. This I is don't know team. about this team. That's the thing is like, we've, we've talked about that. I get it. I get it. I'm willing to say that I don't think that applies to this team. Because I mean, this series could, I like this series could easily be tied to two. It could be, but it's not. It could be, but it could easily be over also. Like it, it could just as easily be over. And yeah, I, I, I think that they got their one, like they fought, they got their one. 
but there's still that there's still that like five minute Warriors 15 nothing run. Jokic takes a little hard shove foul and is like, all right, well, we had a good season, everyone. You guys enjoy the rest of the game. I'm gonna watch this one from the locker room. No, he and won't then- do that. He won't do that. This series has seen been that like that. though a couple of yeah. times. No, I'm telling you, I I don't think that happens here. I thought it might after the first two games. I don't think so anymore. Mm. All right, I think that's out. Um, I do think it. it's possible. Maybe I'm wrong, but like I do, I do. Here's kind of the read though. The right was I just think look, a big reason they won game two or game four was the bench. Yeah. I can't trust them to get the to, to yeah. have positive minutes. On the yeah, road. on the road especially. Yeah, like, that, that, that's, that's first a good quarter, point. I don't mind Nuggets. First half, I don't mind Nuggets. But uh, like, if they, I'll tell you this: if they are, I'm going to do exactly what we did in that in that first in that in that last game too. Though I'll tell you, if the Nuggets are up or hanging in the the first half, I'm going to be on the Warriors live bet again. Yeah, because yeah. their bench is not having two good stints on the road. That's not yeah. so. Yeah, so the, Nuggets, the Nuggets have actually won the first quarter money line in yeah. three out of four yeah, games. It. And I mean, Curry's not what, starting. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, that's plus 160, 170. So I think you got a positive expectation there. And they've covered the, the, the spread in all four games. So I think that's probably a, good, a solid play as well. Okay, so my last question. So we got Bulls box 3-1 series. We got Nuggets Warriors 3-1 series. We are fully expecting the series, both of these, to be over. Agreed? We all expect that this is the last night we're going to watch these series? Yes? Yes. I mean, at least with the Bulls. And the Bulls the Bulls are done. They're going, on, they're going to Cancun. Um, this one, I, I think so, too. I think this is over. Sure. So here's my question. Barring an injury, knock on wood, no injuries, please. What has to happen for either the Nuggets or the Bulls? Obviously, they have to win. What would have to happen in addition to a win? What would you have to see from either one of those teams to when we come back to the series, be like, hold on, the Nuggets might be live. The Bulls might be live. Oh, they win games. If they win this game, if they win this game, yeah, I'm looking at Nuggets. Yeah. Bulls, I'm not. Bulls Bulls can win this game, and I'm going to be like the Bucks, Bucks again. Yeah, but, the, the, the Bulls can't win the series. The but, Bulls can't win. But if the Nuggets win this game, I I get a, I don't know if I'll bet it. I'll say that. Like I don't know if I'll bet it because that just takes a lot. But if they win this game on the road, this is the whole thing with the Raptors too. The Raptors are still outmatched. They still should not win the series. But you got two teams that I worry about when things start to turn like this. I just worry about it. But then again, like, there's a reason that nobody's ever come back from 3-0. That's not just like a random one. That's not, that's not just like, like, there's a reason why nobody's ever come back from 3-0. I mean, normally, wow. the, the, yes, they're playing an a inferior team. Um, I mean, we did have one time in 1994, I think it was, it was 94 or 95, the Nuggets came back from a 3-0 lead to take it to a game seven. Yeah. I think we're going to see that this year. But, uh, but I think that you think that in the Philadelphia series, not this one. Like, yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm not, I am not willing to put the Warriors and the Sixers in the same conversation. I am not willing to put a team, a team with Draymond Green and his leadership on the court in the conversation with Harden right. and Embiid. When have the Warriors ever gotten three wins in a series and lost? That's going to wrap it up for Buckets. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have yourselves a great Wednesday, and we will see you guys again tomorrow with another edition. Let's get Buckets.